So good morning, everyone. We're just going to start with a prelude and want to make sure everyone in Zoom can hear. So if you can give a thumbs up that you're hearing, that would be great, uh, especially when Julia begins to play. <laughs> So let's see, are we getting an echo? No, we're not. Amen. Good morning to you all. It is so good to be together uh, at Anjou United Church this morning. We have a small but mighty crowd here. Give a cheer, everybody in person. And uh, all of you online, thank you for joining us in our fifth Sunday of Lent service. We are getting close. Uh, Palm Sunday comes this uh, coming weekend. We are looking forward to that celebration uh, at Trinity at 11 next Sunday, and we will have the uh, Naganhaga Region Youth Forum visiting Trinity. They'll be spending the weekend and uh, being, I think, I hope a large part of our celebratory Palm Sunday service with communion next week. Um, also, you will have seen, and maybe we'll hear later, uh, we are collecting uh, good used clothing, clean, please, uh, hygiene products, things that uh, we can offer to people in need. Uh, there'll be a special way to give those gifts uh, with Jesus in procession in our midst next week. So uh, if you can remember, that would be great. We're also always looking for food items uh, to put in our food cupboard, as well as to share with others. So uh, always Sunday is always a great uh, time to, to give, as we know. Um, before I begin, I just do want to uh, mention that uh, wanted to uh, light some special candles this morning. Um, one is for uh, the people of a small town in Mississippi. Uh, some of you may have seen that a tornado ripped through, uh, I think it's called Rolling Fork, if I'm not mistaken, uh, a small place, and yet many people have suffered. Um, some have died and others are, are left homeless. So uh, we'll light a candle to remember them and ask for God's prayers. Also, uh, you may be aware that uh, Joe Biden has been visiting our Prime Minister, and it seems like they're having a, a pretty good visit. But uh, one of the policies that they have uh, agreed upon is to close the loophole that allowed refugees to come in through a place like Roxham Road um, to claim asylum here. And that loophole has now been closed. Um, there are many who will celebrate that, uh, sort of regularizing what uh, should be, we think, a, a normal sort of border post type of process. And yet we know that for various reasons, people uh, may yet choose to try and come across the border irregularly, uh, feeling 
that that is their only chance for uh, finding a, a country that will accept them and where they can live in peace and freedom. So I light a candle just wherever we are uh, in that regard. It's a big change and we want to pray for the people who are most vulnerable uh, who will be affected by, by that change. So I will light these candles. Thank you. And we acknowledge the territory on which uh, this beautiful church stands and on which we live, move, and have our being uh, as we offer these words. Friends, we gather on lands which hold a long and rich history of occupation and stewardship by indigenous peoples for millennia through to the present day. Indigenous peoples, such as those from the Haudenosaunee Nation and the Anishinaabeg Nation, have long, deep, and historical ties to this land. Montreal, known as Jojage to the Haudenosaunee and as Moniang to the Anishinaabeg, has long served as a site of meeting and exchange amongst various First Nations groups. We acknowledge and thank the diverse peoples whose presence marks this territory and on which peoples of the world, including us, now gather. And would you join in responsibly with me with our call to worship? We pay attention to what is behind us and we notice God's presence. We pay attention to what is beside us and we know that God is here. We notice what is before us and realize that the path is unclear, but we know Christ's promise. No matter who we are, no matter where we come from, no matter where we are going, all are welcome in God's kingdom. So we gather to worship, taught by Christ, moved by the Spirit, and loved by God. And friends, we sing two verses of Let Us Build a House, words on your bulletin or on screen. Faith of 
be seated. And we join in our prayer of approach, offering these words together as we say, Guiding One, you lead us ever towards Jerusalem in the walk of Lent. You ask us to follow you even unto death and beyond. Heal what is dead and dry within us, O God. Rekindle our hope that new life is always possible. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And in the language of our hearts in English and then in French, we offer these words. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Give us the kingdom and the power and the glory ever and ever. Amen. Notre Père qui est aux cieux, que ton nom soit sanctifié, que ton règne vienne, que ta volonté soit faite sur la terre comme au ciel. Donne-nous aujourd'hui notre pain de ce jour. Pardonnons-nous aux offenses comme nous pardonnons aussi à ceux et celles qui nous ont offensés. Et ne nous laisse pas entrer en tentation, mais délivre-nous du mal. Car c'est à toi qu'appartient le règne, la puissance et la gloire pour les siècles des siècles. Amen. Like the powerful story of Jesus meeting a Samaritan woman at the well, the story we encounter today is another that is found only in John's Gospel. The raising of Lazarus is about resurrection from the dead, a story that prefigures the one we will be telling triumphantly in just two weeks time. Who's ready for Easter? Yay! We have a ways to go before we get there. But more than resurrection, this story is another attempt by John's author to paint a portrait of Jesus that demonstrates the power of God to bring new life to all who would believe. Could it be that to experience this new life, perhaps first we need to go through the valley of the shadow of death? Let's listen now in this video presentation of this powerful story. And first, a heads up to you all. Uh, this video presentation speaks the Matthew uh, chapter 11, verses 1 through 45 version of this text, but you will be hearing it in the good old King James version. So get your ears ready for those these and thous uh, and, and I hope you will enjoy. For our friends who are coming in by phone today, uh, we're going to see a movie clip as we hear these words. So I'd ask you to imagine uh, you're in a very dimly lit sick room as the story begins, and Lazarus is clearly uh, very unwell, and his sisters Mary and Martha are attending to him. They call for Jesus then to come quickly. And we'll see Jesus get this news that Lazarus is sick with his disciples in a far off place. And when he finally gets to Bethany, which is the home of Mary, Martha and Lazarus, we'll see first Martha and then Mary as Jesus offers hope for Lazarus and as he experiences their grief. 
And Jesus will see that he'll share that grief in a moment of tears of someone being deeply moved with them. And then we'll see what happens at the tomb as the, stole, as the stone is rolled away. So uh, here we go. I'm just going to share my screen. Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Let us go into Judea again. Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth because there is no light in him. Our friend Lazarus sleepeth. But I go that I may wake him out of sleep. Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there. To the intent ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. brother had no time. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. My brother shall rise again. I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection of the last day. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Yeah, Lord. I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which you come the world. Go and bring thy sister. Oh, yeah. 
he loved him. Could not this man, which opened the eyes of the blind, have caused that even this man should not have died? Take you away the stone. Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldst believe, I should see the glory of God. that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. Lazarus, Come forth. Friends, for the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. Amen. Would you pray with me, please? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be a witness, O God, to your way of love, justice, and faithful walking with us. Amen. Well, I hope all of our friends on the phone were able to hear that good King James version of the story of the raising of Lazarus. It is such a beautiful story. It is so dramatic, so full of emotion and pathos. It is a story that only John's gospel tells. And like other of John's stories that we have been hearing, its meaning is to reveal Jesus in the full capacity of his human and yet divine powers. 
the human part, of course, is seen in Jesus's compassion. Jesus wept. We know it is the shortest line in the King James Version of the Bible. He, like so many of us, couldn't help but get swept up in the emotion of that moment, the death of a loved one, the grieving of the sisters. He felt that deeply in his own body, mind, and soul, as well as did they. And as for the divine part, in John's theology, Jesus is heard to use one of his famous I am statements to make it crystal clear just who he is and who he can be for John's community and therefore for our community as well. I am the resurrection and the life he tells Martha in that beautiful scene from our story today. He's saying, believe me, trust me, that with God all things are possible. What we witness next, is it real? Is it a miracle? Is it a metaphor John uses to point towards some deeper truth about God's way of loving us? Is it a bit of all of the above? Despite Mary's questions, and you heard that one naysayer in the crowd like, oh, he could have been here, he could have saved him. Despite this, Lazarus comes walking out of that tomb and it takes your breath away just to think of it. Just the possibility of it, doesn't it? The brother who had died, the one whom Jesus loved like a brother too, was now restored to the warm kisses and embrace of his overwhelmed sisters. What a story of hope, of promise, and yet mystery, this can be for all of us. Although beyond the point of John telling this story, I've always wondered what happens to Lazarus when he comes back, after he comes back to life. He gets a second chance at life. How does he use it? And is there any way that we could wonder about the same question for ourselves? What if we could be said to come back to life from a dead life that we once knew? Maybe some of you here today have already experienced this, for don't we all face obstacles make mistakes, or find new and maybe wonderful opportunities for growth or change that force us to pivot from one old life to a new life. In a way, couldn't we all have a part of Lazarus within us? Or maybe you would feel more akin to Mary or Martha, feeling like someone has died and taken a part of you along with them. How do you deal with that to find your second life as well? John's Jesus seems to know that these friends who really were as close as family to him, these family, these friends, they needed a jolt to awaken them to a new insight. Everyone is confused when he doesn't go immediately to Lazarus, 
just as soon as he heard that he was sick so that he could somehow prevent the death and all of that attendant grieving. But isn't it true that we do grow as human beings through the pain and the suffering that we experience in life? It's part of what makes us human. It's part of what shows us what and who we really value. Those who are essential to making us who we are. And loss is an inevitable part of that. We know that. Death, we know all too well, is very much a part of our lives. John's story, perhaps, is meant to show us who Jesus is and that we can trust he will become, we can trust what he will, uh, that he will come to us, if not to raise the loved ones that we have lost back from the grave, then to come and to weep with us, to come and to understand our loss and pain. And by his presence, to lift us up, to raise us, perhaps, to a second life. God loves us that much to show such compassion to us as did Jesus for his friends. In the crying together, a renewed sense of hope arises. And trust in Martha and then in Mary, that all while not ever being the same again, yet all may be made alive and well for them again. I can't believe that Lazarus's life after being raised again could ever be the same. People would remember what happened to him. He'd remember too. How could he not be transformed by that experience? Whenever we too discover from time to time, or maybe for some of us, it's day by day that our lives aren't over either. That we can and do live through the tough moments we felt sure would be the end of us. That we can live on as we did before, not in the same way, knowing what we know now, we survived that God's grace and love and undying compassion for each one of us is there for us, come what may. Claiming a second life, I submit, it's no easy thing. But with our faith, with Christ, we know all things are possible. I'd like to end this meditation by sharing a poem by the Toronto-based writer Rebecca Tabobundung, who is a member of the Wasoxing First Nation, Perry Island, Ontario. Her poem is entitled Reconciliation, and it speaks what I think is the hard truth about getting the chance at a second life. In this case, it's about Indigenous and colonial or mainstream Canada 
transforming what has been a culture of death to one of potential for a new, deep and profoundly human second life. And a spoiler alert, this involves a lot of weeping. So let's listen. Reconciliation. We are waking up to our history from a forced slumber. We are breathing it into our lungs so it will be part of us again. It will make us angry at first because we will see how much you stole from us and for how long you watched us suffer. We will see how you see us and how when we copied your ways, it killed our own. We will cry and cry and cry because we can never be the same again. But we will go home to cry and we will see ourselves in this huge mess. And we will whisper the circle back and it will be old and it will be new. Then we will breathe our history back to you. You will feel how strong and alive it is. And you will feel yourself become a part of it. And it will shock you at first because it is too big to see all at once. And you won't want to believe it. And you will see how you see us and all the disaster in your ways, how much we lost. And you will cry and cry and cry because we can never be the same. But we will cry with you and we will see ourselves in this huge mess and we will gently whisper the circle back and it will be old and it will be new. Friends, may the spirit of the compassionate one, the one who cries with us and then bids us claim the second chances at life with our whole hearts and minds and souls. May the spirit of the compassionate one move us and change us this day and always. Amen. We sing now of that compassionate spirit melting and molding and uh, changing us into what the spirit will. Spirit of the living God, number 376, if you have a hymnal at home, we'll sing uh, verses one and two.
Et puis ça, oh, Amen. And we'll have some announcements. Good morning, everyone, both here and at home. It's a pleasure to be with you all. Um, we're doing a little switcheroo uh, right now because I wanted to focus on what's going to happen this afternoon. And at 1.30, we're going to continue and hopefully finish the Trinity's annual meeting. We, uh, we're going to go back to Trinity, and we're going to do that in the gym. For those of you who are here in person, you will have enough time to enjoy some fellowship downstairs with our usual coffee and cookies. And I hear there might be some lava cake as well. And they'll have enough time to enjoy that and, and go on to Trinity. And I hear that there will be soup before the meeting. So um, and I look forward to seeing as many of you as possible to come to the meeting. Our meeting is going to be in two parts. We're going to start off with amendments to the handbook. So we're going to do we're going to create a new council position and elect someone to fill that position. And then we're going to regularize the definition of trustees and match up trustees to this new structure. Next slide, please. Um, then we're going to move on to the rest of the, the meeting. We're going to start with a recap of where we left off two weeks ago. We're going to finish the elections. There are 17 roles left to fill. Next slide, please. We have two motions of new business one uh, regarding hiring an auditor the second is regarding the shared service series coming up this summer and if we have time we'll open the floor up for questions and um, additional motions from the floor then we wrap it up and uh, with a closing prayer and then everybody's favorite part adjournment next slide please um, so I'll be chairing that meeting and I'm looking forward to seeing you there. Uh, the next service at Anjou is going to be on Maundy Thursday. Uh, we're going to do something different. It's called Tenebrae. Uh, did you want to speak about it or did you want me to, to speak about it? No, go ahead. Okay. Um, a Tenebrae service, um, something new for me. There will be um, readings and a gradual extinguishing of light so that we will end our service in the dark. And then we leave in the dark. There will also be an element including um, the washing of Jesus's, of Jesus washing the feet. Following the service, there will be a light supper downstairs. Um, if you want to be part of that, you will RSVP with Bev before Sunday the 2nd. Would you like me to do the rest of the announcements for, for the week? Okay, so, so we're going to switch back and Reed is going to tell us more about this interesting fish. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rosemary. And indeed, uh, especially all of you who are, might be full members of Trinity and uh, adherents, really anybody, we welcome you to come be part of a wonderful quorum online and in person this afternoon. Uh, thank you in advance. So the fish that you see on the screen is uh, something that we learned about uh, at the regional meeting uh, that uh, all of our representatives were there. It was wonderful to see uh, Elsa and Ivy Lynn and uh, Diane. Um, and I, I think Charles was there for part of it too. 
So, uh, and Beverly, you were there too. No, okay. Oh, all right. Well, we're filling Beverly in. The United Church of Canada nationally has adopted a, a new strategic plan. And this is just a brief look at it. So, of course, the fish is a, a wonderful Christian symbol uh, signifying uh, Jesus. And we have various elements of it that our national church will be looking at. And uh, the region was asked to look at it as well. Uh, so the head of the fish, of course, is growth in community, renewing, creating new communities and uh, inviting uh, people to join us in Christian community uh, in the United Church. I, I think I heard, I don't know if it's for the region or, or a larger gathering, but they, they have a goal for like 100 new churches in the next so many years. Uh, so boy, that is a challenge for all of us to think about that. Uh, and the, the parts of this fish in, and the parts of our strategic plan going forward, a strong justice component, uh, being involved with uh, the justice uh, people that need us. Uh, the climate is a, a major, major uh, focus for uh, both worship, theology, and action. Uh, identifying and uh, supporting leadership, always important. Uh, the, the wisdom and sharing with uh, the Indigenous pathways happening in the United Church of Canada with our, uh, a, a separate but equal uh, two canoes coming alongside each other uh, with the Indigenous United Church. And then the tail of the fish is the common good, the way that we share uh, resources and gifts amongst each other for the world. So we will uh, endeavor with our Presbyter Presbytery, our regional reps, uh, to try and share more information as it is coming to us and as we learn about it from our uh, wider region. So thanks for that slide and thanks for listening. So friends, we know uh, our faith is so profound. Uh, the gifts of love, the gifts and the promises that faith offers us in the new life, the second chances that we all can receive is so beautiful. To support these, our communities here at Anjou and Trinity, we thank you as you give of yourselves, your time, your talent, and indeed gifts of money that uh, keep us going. We'll be talking a lot about our financial positions over this next year. Um, so the more that we can support what we have, uh, we will be for the better. Let us bring our offerings now to God.
Oh God, we can receive these gifts. We are so thankful. Oh, we have from the two. Thank you, God. Thank you. We pray. Thank you, oh wonderful. We thank you for the gifts that we all are and the gifts that we bring. We dedicate them now to your way, your will, your service, and your joy. In Christ's name, amen. And again, uh, we be in prayer uh, together this morning. I'd love to uh, offer a special uh, condolence and memory for our member Ian McKenzie on the 13th anniversary of his mother's death. So we keep Ian in our special prayers this day. Let us be in prayer. Oh God, we cannot thank you enough for the story that we have shared this morning, a story of audacious hope, a story of uh, Easter longing for the new life that uh, you promise us is ours in Christ. Thank you for the strong ways you give us, Jesus, to walk with us in the struggles that we know, in all of the ups and downs of our lives, the disagreements, uh, the times we get angry, the times we're frustrated, uh, the times that we are trying to do our best and yet somehow, God, we think, is that good enough? And yet we know, we know that in you, our, our best, you will always accept. You will always uh, find us worthy to encourage us and yes, to be better than we thought we could be. And yet no matter what, in our lowest moments, in our highest moments, you love us all equally. And for that, we are thankful. Call us into our second lives, so oh God, our lives with you at its center. Animate us. Give us joy, bring new friends into our lives, uh, fill us with your love, we pray. Even as we know the world around us has so many troubled places, and we know uh, those among us and around us who struggle, O oh God. Hear us now as we lift our names those other names, maybe the names of people that we are struggling with or in conflict with, even right now, we lift those names up to you and the situations that need your care and our attention in the silence. Oh God, we do keep all the names on our prayer list at the center of our thoughts as we pray with the list through the week. Some names we know, others we don't, but you know them, oh God. And as we think of them, their names, you are there with them as you are there with us making a difference, and for that we are grateful. For migrants and refugees around the world, and for those who will find their journey more difficult perhaps because of the closing of Roxham Road and the irregular crossings into Canada. Oh God, we again pray for the most vulnerable those fleeing for safety, 
um, and for uh, indeed a second life. We think of all those who are in harm's way because of climate change, uh, the terrible tornadoes in the south southern US, uh, flooding in California, so many other places. We thank you for climate action and scientists and our society as we try to adapt and to give this earth a chance to heal. Bless us in all of our intentions and for all the prayers we have offered in the name and way of Christ, we thank you that you come and answer us, O God. Amen. Our final hymn, We Shall Go Out with Hope of Resurrection, number 586, if you're at home, we'll sing two verses. Friends, this is the day that God has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We will not offer to God offerings that cost us nothing. Go in peace to love and to serve. We will seek peace and pursue it. In the name of the Trinity of love, God in community, holy and one. Amen.
And we have some birthdays to celebrate, don't we? Andrea, oh my goodness. We are looking forward to that right now. Is Andrea with us to lead us in our birthdays? I'm here. I'm just trying to get my list of birthdays on the screen. <laughs> Hello, Andrea. Good to hear your voice. Um, so uh, we have a lot of spring birthdays. Uh, so far, here is the list of people I have for March. Terry Yasunaka, Kathleen Murphy, Warren Purcell, Noelia Monday, Dorothy Wills, Roland Wills, uh, Marlene's son, Nicola, and also Kim and Norm's anniversary. Is there anybody else in March? Anyone not mentioned for March? Wow, what a good group though. <laughs> and in April, we have even more. We have Jean-Philippe Dubé-Goupil, Sylvia Louis-Jean, Philip Massarelli, Don Cameron, Sherry Cameron, Dorothy Cunningham, Sheila, uh, Claudette's family members, Andre, Nick, Effie, and Carole, um, Marlene's son, Joey, and I believe it's also John and Beverly's 50th anniversary in April this year. Indeed. Do we have and anybody you... else in April? Gary Garland. Gary Garland. So happy birthday and happy anniversaries to everyone. Uh, Reed, would you and Julia lead the singing? We would. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. May God's richest blessing descend upon you. Give our birthday people a hand. Yay. And I birthdays, see everybody. Happy birthdays. And I think we might have a little gospel to share. Hey, Bola, coming in. We are so glad. Yay. <laughs> Never too late, Bola. Wow. God bless you all and see many of you Trinity folks at the meeting later. Amen. Amen. Good to see you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. How are you all doing? Glory be to God in the highest. Amen. You are the reason I live. You're the one for me. You're the one for me. You are the reason I live. You're the one for me. You're the one for me. You're the one for us, you're the one for us, yeah. You are the reason we live. You're the one for us, you're the one for us. You are the reason I live. You're the one for me. You're the one for me. Why should I feel when I have you surrounded by your love, your everlasting love? Why should I feel when I have you? They don't know. What you mean to me, they don't know what you mean to me. Why should I feel when I have you? Because they don't know what you mean to me. What you mean to me? Why should we feel when we have you 
surrounded by your love, your everlasting love. Why should we fear when we have you? Because they don't know what you mean to us. Or they don't know what you mean to us. They don't know what you mean to us. Or don't they know what you mean to us. They don't know what you mean to us. They don't know what you mean to us. His love is still good. Thank you, Lord Jesus. May he be praised forever. Thank you, Lord.